Good morning and welcome to the start of the April meeting, the uh, Kavli keynote session on the mysteries of mass. Um, we're going to begin this session with a, about a five minute tribute to Fred Kavli. And so it will start with a video, which I'm going to play now. I founded the Kavli Foundation in December of 2000 with a mission to advance science for the benefit of humanity and to promote increased public understanding and support for scientists and their work. I uh, first came to Canada in 1955 and I started my business in 1958, just two, two years after I, I came to this country and, uh, and three years after I came out of school. And uh, of course that's something I couldn't possibly have done in, other, in any other country. And um, started the business in 19, 1958. Well, I, I wanted to do something that, that is of long-range benefit to mankind, to humankind. And I, I chose these fields because I think they are very, very exciting. And they offer tremendous potential, just both in the near future and, and far into the future. I think that uh, the, the study of the brain, the study of... Uh, of, of the universe and the study of, of uh, nanoscience uh, can be of great benefit and, and to some degree can be connected also. And that these different uh, fields can benefit from each other. Science is taking us on an ever accelerating journey into the future which we cannot predict any more than we could foresee the revolutionary power of the transistor. Practically everything we touch in our daily lives has been developed and improved through basic research. And based upon the past, the benefits of science will be even more spectacular than we can ever imagine. So science has lost a real friend and a huge booster. And if you, as you've heard in his own words, Fred believed in the transformational power of science, especially basic research. And this is so important because the world in which we live today, the focus has come to be on research with short-term benefits. And Fred Cavalli and his foundation have been a powerful and are a powerful voice for the long view basic research with still unknown long-term benefits. His only question about today's session would have been on the mystery of mass would have been, do we have the best people and the latest results? He never would have said, why do we need to have a session about the mystery of mass? We all know what mass is. What are we going to learn about? So I met Fred 11 years ago at a dinner that he hosted in Napa Valley to hear how he could best help support basic research. He invited a group of 10 or so astrophysicists to the French Laundry, and most of them showed up with their laundry. And uh, so I'm not sure we'll ever get invited back again, but it was an extraordinarily lively dinner, and Fred listened and uh, uh, learned a lot. Six months later, uh, Fred would visit the University of Chicago, and we proudly became the third Cavalier Institute. Uh, and uh, we continue to be proud of that fact. And during, the vi during his visit, we learned a lot about Fred. And although he was nearly 80 years old, that, that was just the biological clock. 
uh, his mental clock was still that young man sitting in the classroom, enthusiastic, a physicist, an engineer, an entrepreneur. He was climbing all over John Karlstrom's uh, uh, antennas for his Sanyayev Zeldovich array. And the people from our development office were almost apoplectic uh, because we hadn't gotten the gift yet. And uh, he was climbing, and they were worried he was going to fall over. But he, he was incredibly overjoyed in, in uh, seeing the instruments of modern science. The other thing that I would reflect about Fred is uh, there are many people who give money to causes. But no one took more joy in the giving to, uh, or as he would call it, the giving back uh, than uh, Fred Cavley. He really took great joy in it. So he celebrated his 80th birthday, and rather than having fanfare and testimonials to what a great man he was, it was a science symposium on astrophysics, uh, neuroscience, and nanoscience. Um, whenever a Cavley director uh, would visit Santa Barbara, he would invite them either to his office or his beautiful home because he wanted to hear uh, what the latest ideas were and what the biggest problems. And his legacy will live on um, in the prizes, the institutes, and programs that, that he has funded, including this April keynote session um, at the American Physical Society, and there's a similar session at, at our March meeting. And I'll just end on a personal note that um, I will miss Fred's big smile, always a smile, his enthusiasm, um, his thumbs up, and his upbeat, forward thinking uh, about humanity that we heard in his own words, that uh, science is going to transform, transform things and make things better. So this morning, we will honor Fred Cavley's member, memory by enjoying three great science talks on an important topic in basic research.